This is the Xiaomi 13T Pro and in today's video I'm going to talk about my honest opinion about this phone after using it since it has released so that means about a little bit less than two months. But this has been my daily driver. Now let's look about both good and bad sides about this phone. First off, the screen, which is an OLED panel, 144 hertz display, so it's very smooth. And because it's a Crystal Res 1.5K display, means it's much sharper than you would expect. So thanks to this, you have a very sharp, very colorful and very saturated nice panel which is very very smooth. All your content consumption and gaming, watching videos, everything is gonna look perfect on this screen. In the screen we have the fingerprint sensor which is very smooth and reliable. As you can see it's works just perfectly. Moving on to the backside, I really, really love the design. The design of this phone is very, very nice and nice finish. Design for the camera module is very, very beautiful too. It's something that I wasn't a fan of first when I saw this phone, but the more I saw it and after I got it, the more I used it, I fell in love with the design. It's very clean, very stylish very nice looking. But if we're gonna talk about the minus here, well, the bad side about this panel is it's a fingerprint magnet. Literally, you can just touch the back panel a little bit and right away, I hope you can see it, but there's gonna be a lot of smudges all over the pretty much the back. You can literally have fingerprints within seconds of touching this back panel. So while it's very beautiful, it is very prone to, you know, having lots of fingerprints and smudges. So it's a trade-off, it's really nice, but I wish they made it a little bit better in terms of, you know, keeping it nice and clean. The only other option is have the case, which I usually have just for added protection, and the case is already in the package, so it's really nice. And you can have a nice case, clear case, so that you still have what you have here, but you don't have the fingerprints that are really easily left behind. Going even more into the bag, we have three camera system with the main sensor being the biggest one of those and it has a 50 megapixel sensor. The second lens is actually the telephoto lens which is another 50 megapixel sensor and then we have a smaller one hidden in here which is a 12 megapixel wide angle sensor. And I think those three lenses do a perfect job. For photos they're amazing and all of them work great. The main sensor has a little bit bigger size, which means it's perfect for like the natural bokeh when you get closer to the subject. Same thing can be said about the telephoto one because of the two time zoom, which is equivalent to a 50 millimeter. And this is one thing that I kind of don't like about this. I wish the zoom was a little bit more because if you're coming from a full frame sensor like this from a professional camera, well, you will find that a 50 millimeter is something I would use for a portrait, but it isn't something I would consider a, you know, a zoom. And here we have a normal which is about 24 millimeters so the times two lens which is the 50 millimeter is it's very nice for portraits and you know getting that extra zoom but i wish they had either a fourth lens with a little bit more zoom or this one being a little bit more but i'm still happy with what it delivers and the wide angle lens well it isn't as strong as the other ones it still delivers and i think for a wide angle it is more than enough and since we're on the topic of the camera setup, well, you can record up to 8K at 24 frames per second. You can also record in 4K 60 frames per second or in log format in 4K 30 frames per second. So it's amazing for post-production. But here's one thing that I don't like about this camera setup for videos. Well, the 4K 60 frames per second can be shot on both the main and the telephoto, the main two sensors, but the wide angle sensor can only do 4K 30 or full HD in 60. So you have like a trade off here. Instead of having all of them in 4K 60, which would be very nice to have everything uniformed, well, here we have one thing that you have to change. And I just don't like the way I have to always, when I go back to the main sensor, I have to change everything around because it's set to like 4K 30. So it's kind of a thing that you have to change if you want to have. 4K60 on the two bigger sensors. And also, I know this is gonna be a nitpick, but the log format is only on the main camera sensor. So you cannot use it on the other two, which is kind of a thing that I know is like a nitpick because which other phone has log profile and has it on all of the different lenses. But like I said, I wish it was there to have a little bit more options, but I still think it's very cool that they even included the log format 
in the main sensor. And also one more thing about video recording, it records in 10 bit. So it's very good for post production when you want to edit the colors, you know, color grading and everything to do with this phone. And I think that for someone that wants to have a phone for social media and, you know, for content creation and content consumption, this phone is amazing, both the way it looks, the way it works and the way it shoots photos and videos. The Leica collaboration can be seen through the photos where you have the authentic and the vibrant. You can definitely feel their collaboration. And I have to say that both the photos in vibrant and authentic are nice. I would say the vibrant sometimes slightly does overblow the certain aspect of the photo. Sometimes something is a little bit too bright, but otherwise it's more saturated where the authentic is more something like the iPhone colors, I would say. So it's something that is more natural and more something that how you see it. So it's very nice to have those options. The performance, you know, the MediaTek inside of this thing is very, very good. It's the MediaTek Dimensity 9200 Plus, which is very, very strong and more than capable of playing all the demanding games on the high settings. So for daily usage, there is gonna be no way it's gonna be slowing you down. In terms of performance and usability, I just don't like the way it handles bubbles. What I mean is the, for example, the Facebook bubbles, the circles that you have, this just makes it a little bit different because it makes it a square and then you have the bubble inside the square. I just feel like it's not necessary. It could be a little bit better, but that is a trade-off I'm willing to live with because overall the phone experience and the usability of this phone, I am loving it. And I have used it on Lanzarote where we took this phone right away after it launched. I went with it on a trip for two weeks, took a lot of photos, a lot of videos, and you know, overall just usability of it there. Everything worked perfect and I really had a lot of fun shooting with this phone. To the point where sometimes I would just take photos and videos with the phone instead of the camera because of the usability and how nice the quality is. And last but not least, I wanted to mention the 120 watt charging. On another video I posted, some people said their battery was not so good, some people said it was better. Well, for my case, well, let's say this. The very first one or two days I was a little bit skeptical because I just felt like it's not holding as much as I would think it would do. But after the first two days, I don't know what happened, but somehow I feel like the battery, maybe it got used to the way I work, maybe everything was, you know, first two days I was setting everything up, so I was using a little bit more. But after the first two days, now I can pretty much hold the whole day without charging. It really holds up so nicely. I would find myself being outside and, you know, after scrolling for a little bit, and you would think you would probably have like 90% battery, and I am 99% battery. So in my case, the battery holds up very nicely, and the charging, the 120 watt charging, it's supposed to be like 0 to 100 in 18 minutes. I'll say this, if you actually have the 120 watt charging and you have the boost feature on, it can get that 18 minutes. It can literally get you fully charged in 18 minutes. The thing is, the phone is gonna get a little bit hotter when you do that. So it's better to like leave it and just have it, you know, do its thing. But if you don't need to have it in 18 minutes and you just want to charge it slowly, I would just go without the boost feature, just have it at 120 watts regular and it should be done in just like around 20 minutes anyway. And it doesn't get too hot too. One caveat is, I at first didn't know when to charge, because usually I would charge it at night, but with this phone being so quick, when do I charge it? What I found is the best way is to charge it in the morning. When you wake up, put it in, and then whatever you're doing, and then when you're finished like eating your breakfast, your phone is already charged. So that is probably the best way. And I feel like this is something I would love if I was like younger, when I would go to school and I always had the problem with the batteries and you know, like after the whole day trying to charge with power banks, with like outlets, and now you can just like charge in 20 minutes. That would be such a nice thing to have way back in the day. So in my opinion, overall the experience of this phone is like a premium flagship level phone. Everything about this phone is so, so good. So if you are looking for the Xiaomi 13T Pro, I can highly recommend you this phone. And with that being said, this is gonna be the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video once again, and I'll see you next time.